In the last two episodes of Travelogue, we travelled through Jixi, a county in Xuancheng City, discovering the rich and vibrant artistry of ancient Huizhou against a backdrop of yellow rapeseed fields and unforgettable landscapes. This week, we head just a little further northwest to the neighbouring county where Confucian philosophy and creativity run deep. So here we are in another county of Xuancheng City. It's called Jingde and it was only 35 kilometers away from GC County. Now I know it looks wet, but it's Qingming Festival tomorrow and also the Easter long weekend. So I'm not going to let the weather put a dampener on my day because there's still heaps to do and find out about Hui culture and history here in Jingde. So put your gum boots on and join me. My name's Jui, this is Travelog. Jingde, like Jixi, is part of Xuancheng City in Anhui province. And, also like Jixi, it's now directly connected to Beijing by a high-speed railway. Our first stop, a village cushioned by Emerald Hills, just a 20-kilometre drive southwest of Jingde town centre. It may look like a typical Hui-style hamlet, with its white walls and grey tiles, but Jiang village is special. It's known for producing an extraordinary number of distinguished people. Something in the water, perhaps. Not far from the village entrance, there's an old temple. It's dedicated to Mazu, the goddess of the sea. Odd, considering we're a couple of hundred kilometres inland. Amidst the intoxicating swirls of incense and the distant sound of firecrackers, there is a profound sense of peace in its modest design. The perfect place to take refuge from the rain. These days, stumbling across a temple like this is rare. In fact, it's the only public temple in honour of Mazu in all of ancient Huizhou, a region on the lower reaches of the Yangtze River, incorporating what is now southern Anhui and portions of adjacent provinces. The temple's story dates back to the Song Dynasty, when a local man went off to trade overseas. It proved so lucrative that, after his return, he built this temple in honour of his protector, Mazu. I'd like to think that almost a thousand years later, she's still watching over us. I don't know if you guys can hear, but there have been fireworks going off all day, and that's because it's Qingming Festival today. It's a very important date in the Chinese calendar where families gather to pray uh, and worship their ancestors and also to sweep the graves. And they also do this thing where they burn paper items which they think are needed in the afterlife. And it's a tradition that's quite well preserved here in Jingde County. I guess it's a really uh, touching way for those who are living to connect with those who have passed away. Ancestral veneration is a significant element of Chinese culture, largely demonstrated by acts of ancestor worship. Even in small communities, you sometimes find several ancestral halls. These communal spaces were used for collective rituals paying tribute to ancestors, as well as for events like weddings and funerals. Family clans also held discussions or even elections here. So we're in a village called Jiangtun and it was built 1400 years ago, strictly according to the principles of feng shui. It's surrounded on three sides by mountains, giving it stability, and on one side by water, giving it a sense of good fortune. Now perhaps that's why there are so many famous uh, Chinese historical figures that have come from this place and in fact they've been immortalised in ancestral halls like this one. Ancestor worship is emphasised in Confucian philosophy of which the people of ancient Huizhou were devout followers. In this hall we see constant reminders of principles to live by, characters describing filial piety, righteousness, moral integrity and loyalty. A 
A languid stroll through the alleyways, accompanied by some four-legged furballs, brings me to the main ancestral hall of the Jiang family, the family this village is named after. It's an architectural masterpiece, epitomising the paramount sophistication of Hui-style design, the lifelike detail of wood carving that has survived more than a millennium. And, on closer inspection, you see the unbelievable intricacies of its bricks, chiselled by hand. Although visibly bruised by age, it's a majestic structure nonetheless. Inside, it's not so exquisite or grand. Indeed, it's quite minimalistic. But there's a palpable sense of pride. On these faded plaques are inscribed the characters Jin Shi, signifying the highest rank achievable under the imperial examination system. To put it into perspective, the success rate of attaining a Jin Shi degree in the Tang Dynasty, for example, was between 1 and 2 percent. Out of thousands of candidates, an average of 23 were awarded each year. But, Jin Shi or not, I take my time marvelling at the feats of this family. On each hanging banner is a painted portrait and a brief biography of the Jiangs who have brought honour to their name. Now they are eternally honoured. Behind the atrium is a smaller chamber, and right at the back is a wall of Pai Wei, ancestral tablets. It's believed that the Pai Wei is where the souls on earth reside. This ancestral hall is a compendium of souls and stories of the Jiang family. Don't you reckon it'd be a pleasant place to spend eternity, gazing down on the living and marvelling at your own family's legacy? For the Jiangtun locals, domestic tourists and Chinese people all around the world, today is, more than any other day of the year, when the focus is on one's family and ancestors. Qingming Festival is also known as Pure Brightness Festival, or Tomb Sweeping Day, a day of tradition, reflection and thanks, that falls annually between the 4th and 6th of April. It's a public holiday in China, Right now, I'm at an old corner shop browsing gifts that would be burnt for the departed. Paper replicas of objects needed for a comfortable life in the spirit world. Everything from money to mahjong. Several strides away from the shop, there's another ancestral hall, hidden away among homes. Each hall has its very own theme and character. This one is dedicated to the Confucian principle of filial piety, or xiao. Xiao involves respect for one's elders and ancestors, one of the most fundamental virtues in Chinese culture. The everyday application means taking care of your parents and showing them devotion and appreciation. The character Xiao is a combination of a radical that means old, above the strokes for son, depicting a child supporting an elder. Under Confucianism, it's a quality we should always possess, even after an elder's death. <laughs> While splashing through the laneways of Jiangtun, I hear the distinctive clatter of mahjong tiles. 
somewhere. I peek inside this lived-in burrow, a couple's home that doubles as a gathering place for retired villagers, who are a little mahjong mad, it seems. They even have high-tech automated mahjong tables. These days, it's all about efficiency, right? That is so cool. I never knew these tables existed. <laughs> Every day they come here. I sit in and watch and realise why you would burn paper mahjong as an offering during Qingming. It's not simply a game of strategy with a degree of chance, but a source of joy for the elderly, a way to socialise and bond. That was a bit of local light-hearted fun. Let's go see what's happening in the rest of the village. I spend Qingming afternoon strolling around, observing local life in this humble village that has bred numerous eminent citizens, from calligraphers to mathematicians and powerful politicians, all with the surname Jiang. It's a proud place, but unpretentiously so. No, I can't get back up. <laughs> Coming up next, I venture away from civilization and up onto a mossy, misty mountain pass, reciting Chinese poetry in my mind as I traipse an ancient trail. In this episode, I journey on to Jingda, where Confucianism and craftsmanship comprise the core of existence. Join me as I enter ancient ancestral halls, spend Qingming Festival with Mahjong Mad retirees, squelch up a 1400-year-old mountain pass, and watch how sculptors bring stones to life. By the time we reach Jingshe Ancient Road, a short drive southwest from Jingde town centre, the rain has eased up anyway. The walk takes me along a newly paved 18 km mountain route connecting Jingde County to the famous Huangshan area, but it was first trodden during the Sui Dynasty around 600 AD. Even through the veil of mist, it's still picturesque, and now that it's easily accessible, it will no doubt become more popular. As I plod uphill, I recall the first line of a poem I learnt as a kid at Sydney Chinese School one Saturday morning, Qingming Shijie Yu Fen Fen, roughly translated as, it drizzles endlessly during Qingming. It's a melancholic stanza, but it captures the spring weather perfectly. So, expect squelchy shoes if you travel around Qingming. 
Whew, that was a workout for the butt and thighs. Just gonna take a quick rest here and breathe in the super fresh, humid mountain air. And even on a day like this, you know, when it's all rainy, this 1400 year old trail is probably the best way to experience the mountains here. And what do you know? You might even get to see some of the best uh, landscape scenes, I mean, mist, that you've ever experienced. Enjoy it. Mysteriously beautiful, right? The bamboo canopy is like a magnificent ink and wash painting, but at ground level it's a little more peculiar. Here's a little bit of visual trivia for you guys. What do you reckon these alien light protrusions are? They're actually bamboo shoots and not only are they edible, they're super delicious. And how the locals like to uh, cook it is to steam it with some pork and the end result is a little bit crunchy and a little bit sweet. So it's really, really nice. Now, April is not only the best time to view rapeseed flowers, it's also the best time to harvest these things. So if you are ever here during this season, make sure you get some in your belly. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up next, I watch in awe as sculptors work their priceless craft, transforming rocks into plush collectible art, and talk to the man who unraveled the mystery of the legendary Schwen inkstone. On the outskirts of Jingda town centre is a small, noisy factory. Inside, an assembly of artisans busy bringing rocks to life. It's no ordinary skill. It's one that requires unwavering years of practice, utmost attention to detail and both physical and mental strength. With simple tools, they're creating extravagant masterpieces, ink stones, one of the four vital stationary items of the ancient Chinese literati. Collectively, these items are known as the four treasures of the study, the others being brush, paper and ink. An ink stone is a mortar used for grinding and containing ink, which comes in the form of a solid stick. But not only do ink stones have practical worth, they are a highly refined form of art. The carving of ink stones is considered an intangible cultural heritage in China and there are only, I think, 40-something uh, masters of ink stone carving in the entire country and Mr Zhang right here, this young gentleman, is actually one of them. And I suppose I'm watching history in the making. Uh 
这是战国时期的一个陈酒的一个容器，嗯、应该叫护壶啊。The back is about eighty percent done.、Um, let me just show you the incredible workmanship that's gone into it. These little tiny dragons, so much detail, and、oh, it's just amazing. Because you have to talk about a technique. Yen tang and yen tang are not unnecessary. Then you have such a hui wen. It's only a decoration. Mr. Zhang shows me the hui wen design he's working on, a decorative pattern that's also popular in ancient Huizhou wood and brick carvings. It's one unbroken line, symbolizing never-ending fortune. That if you dye it, how do you do it? If you dye it, then you just dye it and do it again. You just dye it and do it again. Ah. 浪费了，也也也不算是浪费吧，就是时间上可能要再再花一点时间。One、uh, mistake, and it's all over Red Rover. He's been working as a carver for ten years. Guess it takes a lot to become a master. This this thing, it looks simple. Actually, one is to look at the basic things, so you have to be able to make it work. So your feeling, okay. Mm-hmm. 完全要沉淀下来，不能有奇特的心理。这样子的话，你是像这么细微的东西是很难做好。要求在做的过程当中，一定要是注意力要是集中的，哦、就是每一刀下去的话，嗯，又要准，嗯，又要狠，嗯，对。它是一种无形的一个力道进去，所以让它这个深度出来，嗯，这样它的立体感就会很强。I get shivers down my spine, not just from the sound of metal scraping stone, but from watching each minute, painstaking movement of Mr. Zhang's hand, and the intense concentration on his furrowed brow. Not just anyone can do this. The next step is polishing, which is nowhere near as tedious a process, but it still takes time. And when it's all done, the ink stones go onto the market. They are all different shapes and sizes, all unique in some way, and they are all produced through remarkable workmanship. Superior ink stones are highly collectible items. In Imperial China, they were presented as gifts from one ruler to another, and to this day remain extremely valuable. Some vintage ones are priced at several million U.S. dollars. The ink stones displayed here are newly made Xuan ink stones. Crafted from a precious rock found only in this area. In the olden times, this area used to be known as Xuanzhou, which is where they get their name from. I'm talking to Mr. Huang, the owner of this factory, who has dedicated himself to continuing the heritage of Xuan inkstones. Wow, this is very good. Oh. So they say that just ordinary people, to measure the ink, first you need to measure the ink density. Yeah. The ink density. 嗯，如果它很压实，那说明它的非常它的密度大，嗯，它就不吸水嘛，嗯嗯。Low porosity is a key feature of a good ink stone because the ink won't dry as quickly. Additionally, it must have ornamental appeal. 这也是一种叫薄玉雕，就是一种浅浮雕，用刀很浅，但是你的凹凸感，你你我们这么看，它的立体，嗯，立体感非常强，嗯。Ink stones can be sculpted into three different types of shapes. The most common are rectangular prisms with the dimensions following a strict standard. They can also be sculpted non-geometrically with arbitrary rounded contours. Last, they can retain much of their original form.
，有可以用了吗？这个你也可以用啊，你可以用这个你也可以用，<笑>但是这样的烟用的毕竟是很少的，嗯、它首先是个艺术品，哦，很多是拿来收藏的。嗯嗯，其实这个烟石头嘛，就中国人很讲究这东西，时来运转，十全十美，对吧？一个一个一个家庭，一个办公室放一个一放烟，它的意义不同，哦、对。哦嗯嗯 Or like the famed Song Dynasty artist Mi Fu, you can even hug your inkstone to sleep. He bought a pipe. He went home and bought a pipe to sleep. Check it. Yeah. It turns out that not all inkstones are impracticably hefty. There are neat, nifty ones too. So this little inkstone、um, is actually a portable device. Um, <laughs> it's hollow because、uh, you can put water inside, and when you need it, you just pour the, the water out from the little holes, and you can use it straight away. So it's pretty cool. I think I might pocket it for later. <laughs> the production of Shuan inkstones came to a standstill some four centuries ago. When the location of this quarry was forgotten, after all, it's not the most striking natural scene in China, but it's a place where Mother Nature has worked her powerful magic. It's as if she wanted someone to make inkstones out of these rocks. They are composed of optimal matter, relatively straightforward to mine, and come practically already polished, sleek, and black by churning mountain water. In recent times, there was a race to pinpoint where exactly the Xuan inkstones came from, and, armed with approximate coordinates from his research, plus a dash of good luck, Mr. Huang was the one who succeeded. Scientific studies comparing antique Xuan inkstones and these rocks confirmed his find. It's quite a historic and sizable discovery. Xuan is. Um. Is our Xuan is the most unique one. It is what we call the Xuan inkstone. 石蛋，石蛋，它是从石头里面生出来的，它跟所有的在岩层中啊，<笑>它是不一样，是是完全不粘连的，它是一个孤石，孤立的嗯。嗯，它这种石头，它的石质的石质非常细腻，同时它品纹也非常丰富。嗯，就是品纹，我可以给你看一下。啊、哦，哦，要用一点水就可以看得出，啊，哦、可以看得出来。嗯嗯，哦。哦它的品纹就能看得出来。啊哈 ，so you can see the patterns when you put water on it。它这种纹理。啊。它就形成了一种水波纹。啊哈。对，所以这个石头是我们燕山最独特的一种。Let me tell you a story. Once upon a time, in a land far, far away, there was an inkstone called the Xuan Inkstone. Now, it was known all throughout the land for its beauty and quality. But the location from which it was mined was lost about 400 years ago, and you could say that it became a legend. Now, in 2010, the location was rediscovered, and this land far, far away turns out to be right here in Jingde County. Now, this king of rock is said to be 13 tons, and each ton is worth 550,000 RMB. You do the maths. Mr. Huang said that I can take this with me if I can carry it. Maybe not. <laughs> Stay tuned with Travelog.